our first question is from a study guide three self test six question one so in this question we the question reads the following. Impersonating the old Tarazan movies, a young man is swinging on a vine. The radius of the circular path uh, that he follows is 4.85. So we start. So the radius here, the radius is 4.85 meter. And I have also the speed when he reaches his lowest point, his speed here. V2 is 3.6 meter per second. The tension and the rope is 8.8 into the power 2 Newton. So we have here V2, 3.64 meter per second. What is the mass of this person? We want the mass. So if this is the tension T, then the gravitational force for this person would be FG. Right? So for this problem, we will take the positive direction pointing toward the center. So we have the positive this way. Then I have sigma F equals to MAC for the centripetal force here. So let's look at the forces that I have along this direction. What do I have? I have T being positive. I have FG being negative equals to M. AC is speed squared divided by R. I want the mass, then T minus MG equals to M B squared over R. I like it moving this to the other moving this to the other side i have mg plus mv squared over r equals to t or take m outside g plus v squared over r equals to t now if i substitute m 9.8 plus 
3.6 squared divided by 4.85 equals to the tension is 8.8 Then to power two, which is M as seventy point two three children. So this is the mass of the person who is swinging and falling under this centripetal force. Now let's move on to the next example. In the next example, I have also study guide 3.1. Six. Question two, this time. In this problem, we have a child that has tied a ball of mass This is the hand of the child and he tied a rope of mass, a ball of mass, has a mass of 255 grams. Kilograms. And he start to swinging it vertically. I have the diameter is 137 centimeters, which means the radius is 67 centimeters, or the radius is 0.67 meter. Now the question here is asking about draw the free body diagram when this ball is at the top of its circular path. You see how it, it matters. The location matters. Look what's going to happen. This is the ball and this is the string. In this case, I have the FG pointing downward, and I also have the, the tension pointing in this direction. The tension is always pointing toward the center. So again, the location matters. If I am looking at here, it will be different. They will be on the same line, however, opposite direction. Right there at the top, they will both will be in the same direction because the gravitational force is pointing downward and the tension of the string is also pointing toward the center, so they will overlap. So this is the answer for part A. For part B, it says before I for, I forget before I forget here they say that this ball is rotating in a speed RPM equals to seventy eight point five revolution per minute. Okay, so this is the rotational speed. 
for item B, we need to calculate the tension in the string here. Tension. Okay, so we have here centripetal uh, force where basically we apply sigma f equals to mac. Now let's look at the forces that we have in this case. While the positive direction is pointing toward the center. So in this case, I have T plus FG equals to M. AC is V squared divided by R. So this guy is going this way. Then this is the V conjunction. Okay, so I need T. T is mv squared over r minus fg. Or v equals to mv squared over r minus mg. Right? If I take m outside, V squared over R minus G. How much is, I know R, I know G, I know R, I don't know V yet. V should be in meter per second. The one I have is revolution per minute. So V equals to this RPM, that is per minute, divided by 60 becomes per second and then multiplied by the circumference of this circular path to two pi r, which means v equals to 78.5 divided by 60 times two times Pi times point six seven V equals to five point five meter per second. Now take this V put it here, then T equals, I have the mass, T equals 0 0.255 times 5.5 squared divided by 0 0.67 minus 9.8. And in this case, T equals to 9.05 Newton. Next is from study guide three. Self test for get. Now in this question, we have two books that are stacked on top of each other. So I have two books. This one is M1, this one is M2. 
A student lifts the books by applying a vertical force of 9.3 Newton on the bottom on the bottom book, which has a mass of 0.54 kilograms. So I have this force equals to 9.3 Newton. I have M2 equals 2.54 kilograms. The books move together with an acceleration of 0.65 meter per second squared so they move they move in this direction with an acceleration let me call this a y so a y is 0.65 meter per second squared vertically upward so it is extremely important to know that those two books that are locked together, they have the same acceleration. And they both are moving upward. Determine the mass of the top book. So we need to find M1. M1 So when we look at this problem and we start putting down the forces. I have this one as FG1, right? And I also have this one as FG2. Those are gravitational forces of the books. So they are moving with an acceleration. This means I can apply Newton's law. In this direction, if, they, if we take this one as y, because we said that this is ay, so vertically is y. And I can, let's, let me call this one prime, for example. Then sigma fy equals to m a y. If I look at the forces that I have in this problem I can see that the F prime is going in the positive direction while FG1 and FG2 are going in the negative direction. Now I'm looking at the whole system. This means the mass should be M1 plus M2. Both of them. And they both have the same acceleration. A y. So let me call this one f prime because I called it here f prime 9.3. So I have f prime minus m1 g minus m2 g equals to m1 plus m2 a y. Let me substitute here, or let me put M1 together. So I have F prime minus M1 G minus M2 G equals to M1 A Y plus M2 A Y. I want M1, so I will move this one to this side, right? And I'll move this one to that side. So what do I have here? I have M1G plus M1AY equal. So this one came to that side, became positive. Now this one's gonna go to, the, to that side or become negative. So this is F prime minus M2G 
minus M2 Ay. M1 G plus Ay equals to Let me substitute right away. 9.8 plus how much is the AY? 0.65 equals to 9.3 minus point five. Four times nine and eight minus point five four times point six ten. If you work out the equation, you will find out that M one equals two point Three five kilograms. So this is how we calculated the mass. One equation, one unknown. Any questions so far? Part B is determined. The force, the magnitude of the force exerted by the bottom book on the top book. So let me take this top book. This is the top book. As a mass M1. Again, this is the axial direction, the positive direction of the motion. And it has an acceleration a y in this direction. So F G one is this. Now, since I separated those two books now, I took the other book. I have to put the force that this other book is putting on this book one. Because F one. So I have a I have a mass that is moving in this direction, positive direction with an acceleration Ay due to the force F1 coming from the bottom book. Then I can write sigma Fy here equals to M Ay. However, the forces here are now F1. minus Fg1 equals to only the mass of the top book times the acceleration 0.65. So I need F1, so F1 equals to, take this one to the other side, becomes M1g plus 0.65 M1, take M1 outside, F1 is M1, inside is the G, which is the 9.8 plus the 0.65, and M1 is point thirty-five. times 9.8 plus 0.65, then F1 would be 3.65 Newton, whereas if you round it, it would be 3.7.
Okay, so uh, the next question is also from study guide three, self test five, study guide three, self test five, question one. This question we have uh, says an excited child is dragging a toboggan using a rope across a grassy field covered in a frost. The child is pulling the rope at an angle of 27.4. So let me draw this. F. F is twenty seven point so it's nine point seven one in Newton. This force is making an angle with the horizon with the horizontal of twenty seven. Point four degrees, so we have here theta is 27.4 degrees. The, the toboggan has a mass of 6.39 kilograms and is accelerating at a rate of 1.22 meter per second squared. So I'll call this one AX equals to 1.22 meter per second squared. And if I put my coordinates here, this is gonna be my X and this is my Y. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the toboggan and the surface beneath it? So I am looking for mu k. Right? I need the coefficient, the kinetic friction coefficient. So let's look at uh, this problem and try to draw the forces that we have here we have gravitational force, Fg. We have a normal force, Fn. And we also have a friction, kinetic friction, Ff. Along the y-axis, I don't have acceleration. I don't have motion. There, there, are no, there are no net forces along the y-axis. Along the x-axis, yes, I do have an acceleration, ax, in this direction. Right? So when I write Newton's equations, I say sigma fy equals to zero. So here I don't have a net force, then I don't have an acceleration. So I have sigma fy equals to zero. In this case, my forces along the y-axis would be, I have Fn as positive, I have Fg as negative, and I also have the projection of the force on the y-axis. So I will call this one Fy. And now this y, Fy is positive because it's in the positive direction and it is plus F sine 27.4 degrees and this equals to zero. So this is the first equation coming from sigma fy equals to zero. Now let's analyze this equation further. I have f 
right? I have FG. I can calculate FN. So let's do this. Let's calculate FN. FN equals to FG minus F sine 27.4 degrees. FN equals to MG minus F point four six. So I have FN equals to six point three nine times nine point eight minus nine point seven one times point four six and FN equals to fifty eight point one five newton. This is FN. Now let's look at the second equation that we have. We have sigma FX equals to M AX. So what are the forces that we have along the x-axis? Fg doesn't have a component on the x. Fn doesn't have a component on the x. Only the friction, the kinetic friction, and only the f. So the f is f cosine 27.4, and this is positive, f cosine 27.4 degrees, and this is positive minus F F K equals to M A X, right? Those are the only forces that I have along the X axis. And I am looking to calculate this one. So F F K equals to F cosine 27.4 degrees minus M A X and F F K equals to 9.71 times point eight nine minus the mass 6.39 times 1.22 and F F K equals to seven point eight F F K equals two point eight four four. Okay, so this is the fraction Newton. Now I know that F F K equals to mu k fn which means that mu k as ffk divided by fn or mu k equals to 0 0.844 divided by 58 Point fifteen UK equals to zero point zero one four. Question six seven from the textbook reads the following A hockey puck travels thirty three meter. So let me draw this. I have a hockey puck 
here v1 equals to 11 meter per second it travels 33 before it reaches a complete stop here when v2 becomes zero What is the magnitude of the acceleration of the puck? This is question six, seven from the textbook. So we need to calculate the acceleration that caused the puck to come to a complete stop. So I have here V1 as 11 meter per second i have v2 as zero and i have an acceleration that caused apparently a force that caused this part to come to a complete stop i need to calculate the acceleration so this is in this problem we can use the motion equation that you learned earlier where I have V X squared minus V X naught squared equals to two A X minus X naught. So let me put this one as AX. So here I have this as zero. And I have this delta as 33 meter. So I have zero minus, or let me just put this, minus 11 squared equals to 2 AX 33. Which means that AX acceleration is given as minus 1.83 meter per second squared. So this acceleration is the one that goes the part to come to a complete step. The second part of the question is what is the coefficient of the kinetic friction between the puck and the ice. So I need now, so this is A, this is B, I need a mu K. Okay, if I need a mu K here, I need to look at this part. and the forces that are applied on this part so this is a g and we have here the friction f at k we know that the acceleration is in this direction so since we have a force then we can apply Newton's law for Fy this is going to be zero and this is going to end up with Fn equals to Fg Fn equals to Mg or at n equals to 9.8 m. I don't know the the mass of the puck. Now from the second equation f x equals to m a x I only have the friction force 
which is going in the negative direction. So I have minus SSK equals to M AX. I want to calculate the FFK. So FFK equals to minus M minus 1.8 which is FFK equals to 1.8 3M. Right? Now, I know that FFK equals to the friction coefficient times Fn, which means that mu k as Ffk divided by Fn mu k as Ffk 1.83 divided by Fn, Fn as 9 point but this is M, 9.8 M as well, right? M is going to cancel the same mass. And this is going to give me mu k equals to 0 0.187. 